Uh, all right, so good morning to all of you. Uh, my name is uh, Sachit Rao. I am a member of the faculty here at IIIT Bangalore. The focus of my talk is in the uh, is using the phenom a phenomena which has been identified as the so-called machine zone, and try to see how technology has actually helped uh, in achieving this zone. So I'll first try to explain what this zone is and using theories and results in the engineering and the biological sciences, try to explain why this is potentially a problem and also try to provide some solutions on how some of these issues can be, can be avoided. Uh, so this is a basic overview of the talk. I'll first introduce the phenomena which are uh, called the machine zone. Uh, this will be in the context of a particular class of technologies. I'll, uh, primarily in uh, gambling machines that you see in casinos in Las Vegas and in other places. And I'll try to then extend that into uh, social networking sites, uh, social media. So that's the digital and the everyday. So these are the social networking sites that most of us here spend some time on. So I'll try to see by, uh, based on this very extensive study that was done on, uh, on uh, gamblers and technologists in Las Vegas, try to see if there are parallels that can be drawn in the context of social networking sites as well as mobile games and the issues that people face when, when, we, when we are basically introduced to, uh, to these things. Now, mo simply presenting the phenomena of the machine zone for me is not very satisfactory. So I'll go one level deeper and try to explain why is it that technology companies have been so successful in enabling this so-called zone. Uh, I'll be taking lessons from behavioral psychology, things like Skinner boxes and reinforcement schedules and so on, and try to explain why, why these companies have been so successful. I mean, what is it that they are able to draw from our, uh, from our personal being and the way we react to circumstances and so on in making this such a global phenomenon? And uh, I'll also like to go one level deeper and try to understand from a neuroscience point of view, why is it that the results that were obtained in behavioral psychology, why are they so successful from a neuroscience point of view? Okay, so this is again one level uh, deeper in trying to understand why these things are so, uh, uh, have become so popular. And finally, I'll also like to touch upon this concept known as uh, homeostasis. So we'll start with the machine zone. So this, this, uh, uh, this notation, so the, this, this phrase, was coined by uh, Professor Natasha Schull. So this work, uh, this particular paper and the book uh, that she has published is an ethnographic study that basically uh, she spent a really long time in talking to uh, gamblers, in talking to the people who build these machines where people gamble and various actors in this whole technology in trying to understand what is the machine zone and hence coined, uh, coined the term. So the first few slides that I'm going to present are the, uh, are the statements that, have be, that were made by people during her interview process. So these are ordinary people like you and me who go and have spent a lot of time and money and energy on these gambling machines. And based on these experiences, she was able to come up with this term known as the uh, machine zone. So I want, you to pay f I want you to pay attention to some of the letters that are in a different color. Uh, primarily because I want you to, uh, th that will be my focus, try to explain what is the machine zone and then relate it to the other topics. So, so uh, according to this one particular player, so she, she feels that when she plays, when she's in front of a gambling machine, it, the, the intention is not to win, but to keep on playing. Okay, so that, that was one statement that was made. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second one is that while, she's, while this person is playing, they just want to be isolated, they want to get lost. Okay, so there is, uh, there is no other motive for this particular person. Another one is, I resent someone breaking my trance. So you can see that they're kind of closely related. They want to be, they want to be isolated from, from the world and so on. So they want to have, uh, be in their own, create their own microcosm and stay there. And finally, we have this particular, this person who made a very strong statement said, leave me alone. Okay, so these are some of the phrases and some of the statements that uh, she was able to capture in interviews uh, based on which she was able to describe the phenomena which she then termed as the machine zone. So you can see some similarities in all the keywords that I have made and bold here. Uh, so there are also other features of the machine zone that have been identified, which is what I'll dwell upon in the technological aspects of uh, these gambling machines. 
So one of them said, it's not about winning, but it's about continuing to play. Okay, so they don't care whether they've made a million dollars or not, but they just want to keep on playing and remain in this zone. The other feature is, uh, as you have less and less money, you get faster and faster. You're only trying to speed up and get into the zone. So people want to get into the zone very quickly. Okay, so it's not that it should be a long drawn out process, of several hours or whatever, but very quickly they want to get into the zone, feel lost, cocoon themselves uh, with, the, with the machine. Uh, another feature here is the machines have been designed in such a way that they just require just enough attention so that you can't think about anything else. Okay, so, uh, and finally, uh, here the, there, is a, there is a statement that relates to some of the financial issues that my, that my colleague had mentioned earlier. So if you put in a $20 bill, it's like a token, it excludes money value completely. So the reason why I've put all these things is because these are now related to the technologies that have actually gone into designing the slot machine as we know it today. I mean, do you have a specific question in this? Yeah, so, it, so it doesn't require a lot of attention, so you can't multitask, is that what you mean? Exactly. So you, I mean, if you saw in the earlier slides, the, the issue was to get into that zone very quickly and continue to stay there. So they don't want to have, they don't want to have any distractions. The machine by itself should not be so challenging that, you know, you need to use, uh, you need to think a lot about how, how to operate it. So it's like if you're, for instance, if you're playing a very complicated video game, you know, you may have to think about many things. But here the actions are very simple, your thought processes are very simple, and you don't need to spend too much effort in, uh, in getting into that zone and staying there. If you read the papers that I have cited here, for instance, this textbook, many people have actually labeled this as electronic cocaine. Uh, gambling machines have been labeled as electronic cocaine, so technology has actually enabled people to stay hooked and keep coming back for more, okay? Uh, I mean, so that's again the motivation on why this topic is perhaps of uh, uh, critical importance these days. Uh, so how to attain the machine zone? So what is technology, how is technology basically enabling people into, into attaining this machine zone? So these three components here have been identified as being the most crucial in enabling people to, to be in that zone and continue to stay there for a really long time. So the first one is accelerating play. So you don't want to take a break at any point of time. You just want to keep on playing. So there should be no distractions, okay? So in the traditional machines, I, I'll give you, I have a few, one slide on the history of the gambling machine that I'm going to talk about. So previously they were all, uh, you know, mechanical in nature. You had to use actual coins, currency as we know it, and, uh, and then based on your winnings, you had to go and exchange them. So they may not be currency that would be considered legal outside the casino. It could be a token that they would give you which you would then encash. Now, if you had to encash them, this basically meant that you were distracted, okay? You, you got some money, you had to go encash it for whatever you want. Now, technology is basically enabled people to avoid all these things, okay? So it made life so simple for them that don't get out of the machine. You know, we will do whatever it takes for you to keep on playing. So we will introduce all technologies, all aspects of, uh, 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 of issues that, that concern money and maybe even food and if you want something to drink at the casino, we will provide all these things, but just stay stuck to the machine. That was the, that was the focus. And extending duration of play. Now this is something that's very crucial. The technologies have to be designed in such a way that people feel comfortable in playing in front of it for extended durations of time. So the, uh, so the machines were designed in such a way that the human sensorium, as we know it, uh, so-called sensorium, which basically involves light, sound, touch, and other aspects, even smell, were designed very, very carefully in such a way that you could really stay comfortable within that cocoon. Uh, there is an entire chapter in, this, in the book that is devoted to casino interior design. Okay? So there was a, there were, uh, based on a person who, was a, who spent a long time as a manager in one of these casinos, he, the, there's an entire chapter on how the interiors of the casinos were actually designed. The light, the intensity of light that was, uh, that was shared on the players, the sounds that were played in the, in the ambience, and there were even uh, efforts that were done to simulate the sound of money falling, of coins falling, okay? So I told you that people, uh, lot, technologies work towards eliminating hard cash, either in terms of coins or in terms of notes, but you had to feel that you are actually winning something, 
Okay? So technologies were developed in such a way that you felt as if you, know, you were winning something. So all your sensory inputs for a human, which is our sight, our sound, and so on, were designed in such a way to ensure that you just keep on playing. Okay? So this is, the, this is the issue here. And the third one is increasing the money spent. Now, you're a casino as a business. You want to make sure that you get most money. You, I mean, you want to get as much money from your customers as possible. So again, here, uh, so again, as I pointed out, you reduce time to handle coins. You don't want to deal with physical currency. And the other, uh, uh, the other uh, technology that was developed is something called ticket in, ticket out, where these machines were actually uh, designed to be designed so that it can directly connect to, say, your bank accounts. So you can withdraw money almost automatically as soon as you felt that the number of credits that you had reduced. So uh, there are several uh, anecdotes that have been mentioned in the book where people have uh, you, you know, like almost come down to a zero balance. The banks also sometimes work in collusion with the casinos, and then they give you extended credit. So let's say that you have only about uh, 100 rupees left in your, uh, in your bank account. So, Based on your profile, based on how loyal a customer you have been to the casino, banks are also willing to give you some money at that point of time. Okay, they're saying, you know, I'll, I'll loan you 10,000 rupees now, and I know that you'll maybe make it back. So in order for technologies to actually enable all these issues, so this again kind of ties in very closely with several of the topics that my colleagues have talked about in the previous lectures. Questions of privacy, questions of money, data aggregation, and digital identities. Okay? So there are a lot of these things that are closely tied in, in how you can, how the technologists and the casinos ensure that you really have a nice time when you're playing. And the, uh, the noteworthy thing here is that people do it voluntarily. Okay? People want to remain in that zone. People want to go and actually play there for extended durations of time. So all the issues that were raised about uh, you know, who is getting my data, who is tracking my profile, and so on. So here, people seem to be giving it voluntarily, simply because they know that they're going to get some rewards or pleasure by playing at the gambling machine. So again, I, as I told you earlier, it's, they do, it's, people are not really concerned about mon making money. So it's not that you know, they want to walk out of the casino with like a million dollars that day. They just want to play. Yeah? So uh, just give you an example of the sort of technology that uh, the sort of gambling machine uh, that I'm talking about. Uh, this is again a YouTube video. Uh, this is from a company called Bali Technologies, which has been a leader in building these. A work of form. A work of function. A work of art. Introducing the Alpha 2 Pro Series Wave, the groundbreaking new game cabinet from Bally Technologies. It's nothing less than art for your casino. Form and function have combined to create a truly unique 40-inch concave HD screen cabinet. The state-of-the-art high-definition display curves gracefully inward, a sleek and sophisticated presence on any casino floor. A striking new technology, touch enabled for maximum interactivity and ergonomically designed for maximum comfort, the Wave delivers a powerfully different play experience. The display placement provides natural viewing, while the chair position makes it easier to reach the button panel. The first cabinet designed with female players in mind, the button panel height and angled footrest provide support for smaller players, while the button panel's slim design allows more legroom for taller male players. The Pro Wave comes complete with a full complement of award-winning cabinet technologies, including custom LCD paneling and backlighting, the trailblazing eye deck, and an optional 22-inch digital topper. Plus, the Wave supports Bally's library of V32 and V2222 games, plus four new titles designed exclusively for this award-winning new platform. An inspiring piece of technology, inspired by the art of play. The Alpha 2 Pro Series Wave, only from Bally Technologies, your partner in innovation. If you were actually able to uh, listen to some of the statements that were made in this, uh, in this advertisement, you could see that you know, they talked about ergonomics, which basically increased the comfort level of the players. They spoke about the height of the chairs in such a way that the female players could play. The touch screen, which ensured that you, know, you were really comfortable playing these video games and so on. So these were the efforts that go on 
behind the scenes in actually developing these technologies. There is a lot of technology that goes on, a lot of effort from various disciplines of engineering and psychology that has gone into the building of these machines. But more than the technology itself, it's what is the consequence of having these, having these systems, uh, which, is, which is, I think, worth asking. So you could see some of the phrases that were, uh, that were thrown about in the, in the advertisement, something about continuous gaming productivity and so on, and enhancing the consumer experience. Okay? So it has come to this point where technology has become so focused that you want to really pay attention only to some of these key aspects. Okay? So for the casino, gaming productivity basically means how much money can I make. Okay? So the idea is for the casino to keep making enough money and the people, the, 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 the gamblers who play at these systems, for them their motivation is to stay in that zone. So you can see that you know, there are several aspects to this, uh, to this issue and uh, it's not something that I think should be taken, uh, taken lightly. Uh, so just a brief technological history about the gambling machine itself, the one that you saw. So it actually started off with something that looked like this. This was built, I think, in the 1870s or the 1880s. It's called the Liberty Bell uh, slot machine. This was a purely mechanical contraption. People actually had to pull a lever and you know, gamble uh, and then uh, place their bets. So the idea with the slot machine, so this particular device is called a slot machine. Maybe you've seen this in uh, earlier uh, uh, seen this before. So the idea is you see these three things here in the machine. So these have various symbols that are, that are printed on them. And the idea here is that if you get three of the same symbol in a row, then you'll get some money. Okay? So previously it was a pure mechanical contraption and they were placed in such a way, I mean nobody really gave these machines very serious thought. The, the people who run the casinos, they never really gave them too much thought. They thought it was like a trivial piece of equipment and they were primarily designed to keep the female companions of the real gamblers occupied. So, you know, you've seen movies in James Bond, right? You have all these guys wearing tuxedos, playing card, card games and roulette and all those analog games. So those were your serious gamblers. Or maybe if you've seen the Ocean's Eleven series of movies, you know, where people play different types of card games and so on. You never really see people playing video games in all these movies, right? So this was the motivation for the uh, introduction of such, uh, su such systems in uh, traditional casinos. But by the 90s, these machines actually made place for, I mean, these, these machines took over all your traditional analog games in casinos, primarily because of the amount of money that they were actually generating for the casino. Okay? So the focus of the, the book that I cited earlier was to see why is it that, what is the role that technology is playing in enabling all these changes? Like you had traditional games, traditional card games, uh, again gambling, but now they're replaced by these systems, seemingly innocuous, but obviously not. They're bringing in so much more money than your traditional games. So, and how did technology basically change in enabling all these things to happen? So the first, devices were purely mechanical in nature. You had gears and levers and springs and so on. And finally, they moved on to using digital microprocessors. So this is something that all our current day devices are equipped with. Your smartphone, for instance, is very sophisticated from microprocessors to do numerous things. Now, these again have been used in the design and development of, uh, of such systems. More than the technology itself, it's also the role that is played by mathematics, basically probability theory, in, in, in making these these systems so popular. So random number generators, so if some of you have a, a background in mathematics, uh, or taken courses in probability theory, you know how these random numbers are generated. There are several distributions from which you can pick out these numbers. So the nickname that is given to the letters R and G by the people who actually play these, the gamblers themselves, is called a really new god. Because it is these systems that actually decide how much you're going to win, whether you're going to stay in that zone, and so on. Okay? So there, it's a fairly collusive effort. You have technologies, you have mathematicians, all these people who are working together to develop these, uh, these systems. Uh, technological tricks that have been used in making these machines, in improving these machines, and ensuring that people continue to remain in the zone. So the, there's, a, there's a system known as virtual real mapping. What happens here is that the, each of these reels, uh, so this is basically a cylinder, it's basically a wheel on which you, know, you have these symbols that are pasted, uh, but there are a lot of blanks in between them as well. 
so there may be a, the, the traditional ones had 11 symbols and then they had 11 blanks. But with the introduction of microprocessors and other such advanced technologies, what could happen is that you could actually virtually create more blanks in such a way that the, how, that the casino ensured that it always made more money. So in the traditional system, if you wanted to win a jackpot, you had one in 10,000 chances. So if a person actually sat at a system and played 10,000 times, then you know that he or she will actually get the jackpot. But with the introduction of these virtual stops, which were enabled again by microprocessor-based technology, the, suddenly the odds of winning the jackpot increased like 25 times. Okay? So these were some of the tricks that were enabled in order to make sure that uh, uh, in the development of these uh, systems. Uh, again, you please keep in mind the statements that were made in the interviews with the gamblers, that they really don't care about winning. They only want to play. Okay? So if the odds of actually winning something are so high, then, you, then the, the, the odds, the chances are very high that you will keep on playing until such time that you feel that, look, I'm going to get a jackpot. Okay? And another one, uh, another uh, trick that was used is so-called clustering. So where these virtual stops, so remember that these virtual stops actually don't exist on the physical wheel themselves. So they're actually mapped onto something that is sitting in the computer. But you place these virtual stops in such a way in very close to the real money winning symbols. Okay, you have all these symbols, they have to come three in a line and then you get some money, right? But the virtual stops, if you, pl if you place them very close to an actual uh, a symbol that will actually bring you money, but because you have more of these virtual stops than you have the money winning symbols, the odds are high that you would get more of these stops, right? I mean, that was the whole point. But if you place them close enough to the actual symbols, a phenomena known as a near miss effect is introduced. Okay, so this makes people feel that they have nearly missed winning something. They've actually not won something, but they feel that they have missed something. Now we will see that this phenomena of near miss effects has very serious, has been studied extensively both in psychology and in neuroscience. And, and it is basically these results which enable the if you can call development of such systems. Okay? So there is deep-rooted science in why people are actually using some of these tricks, technological tricks, primarily borrowed from psychology, the way our human brain is wired and so on. Okay? Now, uh, this is another game, uh, slightly different from the slot machine. So this is video poker. So uh, in video poker, the idea here is to keep on increasing the frequency of getting these rewards, which could be like very, very small amounts of money. So, you give minor, but you give frequent rewards. So again, as I said, you don't, people don't want to win a jackpot of a million dollars the moment they start playing. But you keep giving them very, very, in, very frequently, you give them small amounts of money such that they feel they've actually won something while they're playing the game. How is all this enabled? This cannot be, you cannot do all these things you know, from thin air. This has actually been enabled by pure math. So this is actually a statement that was made by, uh, I think, a, a technologist or a mathematician who works for one of these casinos, uh, not a casino, who works for the company that builds these systems. So he says that math is what will make them stay. So mathematics has also, uh, the usage of very basic results in mathematics has also enabled the, uh, uh, the, the, the construction of, some, so of such machines which enable people to get into that zone very quickly and stay there for a very long time, okay? Now, keeping this as a background, understanding the phenomena of the machine zone as enabled by technology, I actually now want to move to its use in social networking sites, okay? Which is why digital and the everyday. It's not that you and I go to casinos every day, right? Or, I mean, I, I suppose there are very few casinos in India to begin with, unless you're in Goa or something. But what the people who run the casinos have figured out is that it is not actually the tourists who go to Las Vegas or any of these places that they're bothered about. They don't care about the tourists who come there and maybe lose like $1,000 in a night or whatever it is. They are more bothered only about the repeat players. So they're bothered about people who live in the neighborhood of these casinos who can come very regularly and gamble there. And they even go to the extent of providing parking, childcare facilities and all those amenities just so that people have the luxury and the comfort to make sure that they can spend a long time on these, on these devices. Now, why is this crucial in, our, in the context of social networking sites? Each of us now has access to the social networking site on our very smartphone. 
it's not that we have to go to some far off place. Maybe like 20 years ago, you had to go to a, an internet kiosk if you wanted to check your Orkut page or your Facebook page or whatever. Now you don't have to do that. Now all of us have become repeat players in the context of social networking sites. Casinos were our physical structures. But now you have these, you have these ideas that are also being incorporated as apps in your smartphone. I'm sure you can play that same slot machine as a simple video, as a mobile phone app. Social networking sites are accessible at the touch of a button. It's not even that you have to, you have to click a physical button to get there. All you have to do is tap on a, on a screen, on a glass screen for you to get into these social networking sites. Now, what I'm go so with the keeping the gambling machines as a background, now I'll move on to social networking sites and maybe give you some examples about mobile games as well. But prior to that, I have some quotes from people in the tech industry. And I want you to guess who could potentially have made these statements. So this is a fairly long one. Facebook is about bringing people closer together and enabling meaningful social interactions. They, they can be good for our well-being and that's time well spent. Any ideas on who would have made this statement? This is Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, so he's the CEO of Facebook. Now, there's a reason why I have put this in bold, the phrase time well spent. So just keep that in mind while we, while we move ahead. And there's another quote. So the thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and your conscious attention as possible? Any ideas on who did this, who said this? Huh? Well, actually, it's the first investor and the first president of Facebook, Sean Parker. Okay, so now you can see the you can see the relation between the people who are actually responsible for building these social networking sites and gambling machines. Right? Look at the common phrases that you find there. They want to talk about attention. They want to talk about how much time you're going to spend, and more importantly, they it's. It's coated, it's, sugar, it's sugar-coated in all these phrases. Time well spent, meaningful interactions with family and so on. I mean, I agree that there, are, there, is, there are immense advantages with social networking sites. But there is also another side to using these, using these systems. Okay? And how easily accessible it is to them. 